This morning's scripture text is the Decalogue, the 10 words, the 10 commandments. So the Decalogue is foundational to Judeo-Christian relationships with God, forming one of the critical covenant contracts between God and humanity. But before we get into the content, I want to look at the story around it first. So it's not often that God gets a monologue, but we have such an occasion here where God seems to be talking to God's self. So if you look at the previous chapter, God and Moses are hanging out at the top of a mountain. So the Hebrew people have gathered to make camp at the base of Mount Sinai, and God is perched on top of the mountain, shrouding the mountain in clouds. Moses alone has gone up. Um, and whenever God speaks, the people below experience God's voice as thunder and lightning. So they're all very afraid because they're so close to this God storm. But while God and Moses are chatting on top of a mountain, God tells Moses to go back down. First, God says, Look, Moses, you need to go down and stop the people from coming up the mountain. Um, but Moses tries to reassure God that nobody is brave enough to climb this mountain because <laughs> they're all below terrified. Um, and then God says, okay, okay, fine. Uh, you go down the mountain and come back with your brother Aaron but make sure no one else tries to come up the mountain. And Moses rolls his eyes and goes down the mountain. I'm just kidding. Uh, the last verse of chapter 19 is, and Moses went down to the people and spoke to them. And then the first verse of chapter 20, God spoke all these words. At this point, there's nobody around. God has cleared the mountain and convinced Moses to head back down to collect Aaron God is alone. Maybe there's some animals. So God is alone with the sheep. But of course, the sheep are not alone with God. And God just starts riffing. Hey, so I'm me. And I've been doing some things for all y'all, which are pretty cool. So we should totally be BFFs. And you can't have any other BFFs because I'm the most important one. So don't go hanging out with any other gods. And don't use my name when you don't mean it because my name is special. And I'm only telling you what it is, so take care of it, and so on, etc. And don't steal your neighbor's donkey. So, I guess it's been culturally ingrained into my brain, this image of Moses standing at the top of a mountain holding two giant pieces of rock, which are probably way too heavy for him to be holding, and God throwing lightning at the rocks, magically carving words into them. Now, there is thunder and lightning in the story, because... Remember, whenever God is talking on the mountains, the people below interpret it as thunder and lightning and are therefore terrified. But when God is giving the Decalogue, Moses isn't there. There are no big rocks. No one is there. And it's not even written, carved on stone or any other means. The scripture said God spoke all these words. But we know that God's speak is powerful. God spoke and the universe was created. God spoke and a daffodil was made. God spoke and you came alive, so I'm not discounting God speak. Um, this morning, I'm not going to go through each of the commandments individually. You probably know most of them by heart, and they were read aloud earlier. I want to look at them more as a whole. The first three commandments are about living in right relationship with God. So establishing the relationship God's expectation that Israel not dabble in the traditions of other gods and to respect the name of God solely given to the nation of Israel. This is the foundation. The other seven are about living in right relationship with each other as a community. It's not about making right choices for me to have my best life. It's about making right choices for my community so we all live our best lives together. Because if we're living in right relationship with our community, we don't steal our neighbor's donkey. Just as the first three showed us how to honor and respect God 
The rest show us how to honor and respect each other. And a side benefit of living in right relationship with the community is that the community is living in right relationship with God. So today's theme is make responsible choices and responsible choices is one of our enduring principles of community of Christ. The official statements describing what responsible choices means to our theology include the following. God gives human the, humans the ability to make choices about whom or what they will serve. Some people experience conditions that diminish their ability to make choices. Human choices contribute to good or evil in our lives and in the world. Many aspects of creation need redemption because of irresponsible and sinful human choices. We are called to make responsible choices within the circumstances of our lives that contribute to the purposes of God. These statements are in line with the Decalogue and echo a lot of, of what you hear in those, um, in those Ten Commandments. The first statement right away about choosing who or what to serve is similar to the idolatry commandment. All of the people living in community and later in the nation of Israel were called to follow the laws as presented in the scripture in order to contribute to the purposes of God. But people still have individual free will. It was still a choice that each person in the community is required to make for themselves, which would contribute or hinder the lives of the people around them. Humans are required to make choices every day, big and little. And most choices have an effect on someone other than ourselves. The words we use when we talk in front of our children, what brands we buy at the grocery store, how much money we contribute to church or charity, whether or not to steal our neighbor's donkey, all these choices affect someone else somewhere on the planet. Some of these choices we don't make consciously. Instead, we make them out of habit. And sometimes the choice we make is to not make a choice. But perhaps the question we should always be asking ourselves is, how do we live out our discipleship as followers of Jesus Christ with our choices? In our choices every day, big or little, how do we support the worth of all persons, the sacredness of creation, unity in our diverse communities? This morning, we're working our way towards the sacrament of communion. Sometimes we show up for communion just as we would any other Sunday. It's just another part of the worship ritual that we do. But the sacrament does offer the opportunity for you to live in right relationship with God and your community. Before we take the bread and juice, we are called to spend some time reflecting on recent choices that we've made and how we've helped or hurt the people around us. If we can, Seek out the person we've wronged by our choices to apologize. Or if we've been harmed, make the choice to seek out the person who harmed us to offer forgiveness. When we are once again living in right relationship with our community and God, we then join together to take the bread, drink the juice, to remember our past, to make better choices for our community's future.